And if people made money gambling, casinos will go bankrupt, port will go bankrupt. And it's a multi billion dollar industry. Where do you think they get all that money from? No, but a lot of people, this was a July. This was a July. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Paul fell off. Yeah. The oh, front office. And the lot was rigged too. The fact that they can say guaranteed winner and draw it once and get a guaranteed winner means all the other times they draw they don't get a winner. How can you now, when you guarantee the winner, you first time? No, when they have a guaranteed winner, you know when they say guaranteed winner, how can they take one draw and then there's a winner? Do they still do they still do the yeah. Yeah. So how how do they do that? How can different story is they say draw until we get the number, then I'll say okay. But first draw, they know what numbers they will draw, and then they see where which area they feel like. They probably take a pen. And say, no, they, they don't do that. They use oh, dots. One number from you. Dots. Use dots <laughs> oh, one number from this area. Now from that area. And then they threw now recently right, guys, in the bank. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the acid? Acid. 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 So the substance is acidic or basic or neutral, right? Student should look pH quality. Right? Tell me what does the P stand in the pH? I saw your notes this morning, sir. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> in this lesson, we will learn about indicators which help us indicate the pH of a solution. An indicator changes color depending on the pH of the solution analyzed. Because of this, and we discussed the litmus paper, right? And we said that blue litmus paper turns red, red, right? In acidic medium. Known as pH indicators. Universal indicator is very versatile as it can measure pH across the entire scale from zero to fourteen. It is not a single indicator, but rather a combination of various indicators. If you look at the color changes of the universe of indicator according to the pH of the solution, you will find that it resembles a rainbow. If universal indicator solution turns deep red in a solution, it means that the solution is strongly acidic, with a pH of 1 to 2. So this is for a universal indicator, right? Eh? It's like a, uh, a stick or a strip, yeah. Mm. Universal so indicator. Sorry? So many holes down. Yeah. yeah. If the solution turns green, it means that the solution is neutral with a pH of 7. If the universal indicator solution turns dark blue or purple, <laughs> it means that the solution is strongly alkaline. And we, we had this on the board uh, yesterday, right? Universal indicator paper works in exactly the same manner. Litmus is another indicator commonly found absorbed onto paper as litmus paper. Blue litmus paper turns red under acidic conditions, pH less than 7. Red litmus paper turns blue under alkaline conditions, pH greater than 7. Phenol phthalate is an indicator commonly used to determine the endpoint of a strong acid, strong alkali, or weak acid. Are you acid. familiar with titrations? Yeah. yeah. All right, so... Well, we I don't know, we used to do titrations. Yeah, yeah, so well, I'm not sure if everyone did titrations. Did everyone do it? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Everyone? No. 
But they took it away from the ops guys because we were messing it up. You're a genius. No, no, yeah, we uh, originally we used, we to, used to do it. Yeah. Yeah, then your chair changed. Right? Yeah, people's eyes were. No, only only the only the LPG ones we changed. It made it made me get it on. Yeah. Then I'm gonna take your tickets. Strong alkaline titration. <laughs> it goes from colorless to fuchsia pink and a pH of eight point two. Methyl orange is used to determine the endpoint of either. A strong acid, strong alkali, or strong acid weak alkali titration. It is red at a pH lower than 3.1 and yellow at a pH higher than 4.4. In conclusion, indicators are substances that change color at a certain pH. The point at which an indicator changes color is known as its endpoint, which can be at any pH. Common indicators that you will encounter What? This is a long video. Still searching YouTube for math help? This, so, uh, but the videos from 2006 really helping? Aren't you tired of finding videos that aren't getting you anywhere in math class? So it's for the, if you watch this whole yes, video, you'll get the yes, whole of so the acid acids, and bases. Uh, acids and bases. But I'm just gonna go Did you post it? it? So I have put it on there. What do you mean to do? Two videos, part one, part two. Yes. No. Let's be able to the one that's part one, part two that I need to watch. Acids typically have a hydrogen in front of them. So HCl, that's hydrochloric acid, HF, hydrofluoric acid. As you can see, there's a hydrogen in front of it, or acetic acid, HC2H3OH. Those are acids. Bases typically have a hydroxide, like NaOH and KOH. Those are bases. If you see a hydrogen next to a metal, like sodium hydride, then it's a base and not an acid. But if the hydrogen is attached to a non metal, typically it's an acid. So whenever hydrogen has a positive charge, it's an acid. But if the hydrogen has like a negative charge, then it's a base. Acids tend to be positively charged. Bases that's a that's a rule, right? In terms of the hydrogen proton, for acids, it will always be positively charged. It will always be a hydrogen proton, and then you characterize that as an acid. If it, if it's ever negative, then it's not characterized as an acid. It will be a base. base. Yeah. But like uh, this guy was saying, we can see that if we have a positive here, right, a proton here, it's usually going to be uh, connected to a compound which has a negative part to it, mm -hmm. right? So you you can see these are all and all our negative stuff is always non-metal, right? So your chlorine, fluorine, and whatever, it's always mm -hmm. negative, right, and non-metal. Usually negative charge. Now you need to understand the Arrhenius or Arrhenius definition of. He goes through the three definitions that we look at also, and then he goes through the reactions. That's what we, in this module now, we just have to complete Acids the are reactions. Basically, there's substances that release H plus ions into the solution. Hydrogen ions are equivalent to hydronium ions in water. This really doesn't exist by itself in water. In fact, it's actually bonded to water. And so, it exists as H3O+. The Arrhenius definition of bases is that a base releases hydroxide ions into solutions, while acids, they release H plus ions into solution. So keep that in mind. Now you also need to know the bronsted lard definition of acids. Acids are proton donors. Bases are proton acceptors. So let's 
say if we put hydrochloric acid in water, what's going to happen? HCl <laughs> is the Brasilari acid. H2O is the Brasilari base. The acid is a proton donor, so HCl is going to lose the hydrogen and turn it into chlorine. The base is a proton acceptor. Water is going to accept the H plus ion, and it's going to convert into the hydronium ion. This is called the conjugate acid because we added a hydrogen to water to make it, and this is the conjugate base because we took away hydrogen not to make it. So the acid always turns into the conjugate base, and the base turns into the conjugate acid in the course of an acid-base reaction. Let's look at another example. Ammonia, when it reacts with water, it produces NH4 plus and OH minus. In this example, identify the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. So notice that NH3, it gained the hydrogen and turned it into NH4. So therefore, it's the proton acceptor, which means NH3 is the base in this example. Water lost the hydrogen, so water was the proton donor gave away hydrogen, which makes it the acid. Now, the base is always going to turn into the conjugate acid because we added the hydrogen to it. So NH4 plus is the conjugate acid, which means hydroxide has to be the conjugate base because we want to lost the hydrogen to make it. Hi, I'm Heidi, and I lead engineering for Grammarly Business. I've always yeah. been a word nerd. From my early days, I was a spelling bee winner in middle school, and in high school, I tried to learn five different languages. Now, let's say if you're given water, and you want to write the conjugate acid of water, and at the same time, the conjugate base. What is the conjugate acid of water? Whenever you want to find the conjugate acid of something, all you need to do is add H plus to it. So you're going to add a hydrogen and increase the charge by one. So this is going to turn into H3O plus. The charge increases from zero to one. Now, whenever you want to write the conjugate base of something, take away a hydrogen and decrease the charge by one. So instead of having two hydrogens, we now have one, and the charge is going to decrease from zero to negative one. So the conjugate base of water is hydroxide. The conjugate acid is H3O plus. So given ammonia, write the conjugate acid and the conjugate base of NH3. So the conjugate acid, we've got to add a hydrogen. It's NH4 for plus charge. To write the conjugate base, we need to remove a hydrogen. So it's NH2 for negative charge. Now, for the sake of practice, try this one too. Let's say we have H2PO4. Write the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Let's try that Oh! Huh.
Just there. Yeah. You're done? Yeah. yeah. So we gotta add hydrogen. This will turn into H three P O four. So that's the conjugate acid of this thing. The conjugate base we're gonna take a hydrogen and then decrease the charge number. Negative one minus one, that's negative two. So now you know how to identify. So yeah, so you know your yeah, the conjugate acid and conjugate base. Okay? Looking you're right. So, so in terms of the conjugate acid, we're gonna gain a hydrogen, right? And then on the terms of the conjugate base, we lose a hydrogen. Right? Proton. Losing a proton. <coughs> the base is a proton donor, or the acid is a proton. Acceptor. Yeah. Oh, sorry, the other way around. Because it's the conjugate of the acid and the conjugate of the base. Yeah. yeah. Minus two. And how to write the conjugate acid and conjugate base. Yeah, why minus two? Because we lost like, the yeah. proton, so, so it's going to be, we're going to add the minus from that minus one there. So, so really yeah. minus one, so it's second one, minus two. Yeah. Minus one, minus one is? Minus two. Yes. It's not a substance. You're checking the calculator. <laughs> 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 now, let's talk about the pH here. I probably should have went over this earlier, but better late than ever. So typically, in most textbooks, you'll see the pH go between 0 and 14. However, it can go beyond those numbers, so keep that in mind. At seven, the solution is neutral. At a pH that's less than seven, it's acidic. So if the pH was negative two, it's very, very acidic. Above seven, the solution is basic. Now, if you want to calculate the pH of the solution, you need to know the concentration of the hydronium ion, or the H plus ions. It's negative log of H2O plus. And the pH of the solution, it's the uh, pH of the hydroxide. Yeah, we're going to, listen, you need to know the, the KT pH value, plus the pH where the concentration of the product of the reactant. Uh, it's the last part of the module. Okay, so that's what you need to know. Now, for some reason, if you ever need to find the H2O plus concentration, it's 10 to the negative pH. And if you need to find the hydroxide concentration, it's 10 raised to the negative pOH. So those are some equations that you might find useful when learning about acids and bases. Now, let's talk about strong acids and weak acids. You need to identify if an acid is going to be strong or if it's going to be weak. Strong acids ionizes completely. Weak acids, they partially ionize. They don't ionize completely. So a strong acid, basically, almost all of it would ionize in solution. A weak acid, less than 5%. Strong acids form strong electrolytes in the water. The solution will conduct electricity. Weak acids form weak electrolytes when dissolved in the water. So you need to know the six most common strong acids. And these are HCl, HBr, HF. HF is a weak acid. 
The others are nitric acid, HNO3, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and perchloric acid, HCO4. Those are the most common strong acids that you'll see in a typical general chemistry course. Now, other weak acids include the ammonium ion, NH4, acetic acid. And basically almost any acid that is not on this list. So like cyanic acid, nitrous acid, and sulfurous acid. Notice that sulfuric acid is stronger than sulfurous acid. And nitric acid is stronger than nitrous acid. What pattern do you see here? When dealing with oxy acids, the acid that has more oxygen atoms is the one that's going to be more safe. So sulfuric acid is more acidic than sulfurous acid. Uh, sorry, in the exam, mm -hmm. in the exam, they'll it's ask you, so they'll give you four acids, and then they'll ask you to put it in order of uh, most concentrated acid. So the one that is the strongest acid to the weakest acid. With this here, it teaches you how to actually do that, right? Okay. Yeah, we select the first two. Oh, it's a pure care. Mm. Mm. <laughs> huh? Huh? You still make the first two. Why? Like a byproduct or? No. Why? It's not you. Unless <laughs> 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 Yeah, byproduct. <laughs> Chloric <coughs> acid. Which is more acidic than chloric acid, and that is more acidic than hypochlorous acid. Now HCl is not an oxy acid, so it doesn't fit this trend. In fact, HCl is more acidic than HCl. So keep that in mind. The trend only works for those that actually have oxygen. It doesn't have oxygen. It's not going to fit the trend. The so more oxygen is stronger than oxygen. Now, you need to know how to write chemical reactions with strong acids and weak acids. We went over the example with HCl and water. Because HCl is a strong acid, it ionizes completely into chloride and hydronium ion. So notice that I have a single arrow. So that's the way you need to write the chemical reaction if you're mixing a strong acid in water. Now, if you're mixing a weak acid with water, it doesn't ionize completely. So you have a reversible reaction. So you need to use a double arrow symbol rather than a single arrow whenever you have a weak acid. But to identify the products, it's going to be very similar to the reaction above. So the only difference is, just use a double arrow instead of a single arrow when dealing with weak acids because they exist in equilibrium. The reaction is reversible. Now, let's talk about bases. We need to identify or distinguish a strong base from a weak base. Strong bases are soluble ionic compounds like potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. These are soluble in water. They ionize virtually completely. Think of the strong acids like HCl, HBr, HI. The reason why they're strong is because they ionize almost 100%. So these are soluble, and as a result, they form strong electrolytes. And so they make strong bases. A weak base the ones that have hydroxide in them, they're associated with insoluble compounds. Aluminum hydroxide doesn't dissolve very well in water. Only a small amount of it dissolves. And so it's insoluble. And it doesn't ionize. It ionizes less than 1%, which makes it a weak base. So I'm going to put here 100% ionization, less than 5%. Some other examples of weak bases include ammonia and the conjugate bases of weak acids like fluoride, 
nitrite, acetate, cyanide, all of these are weak bases. Even H, SO3 minus. Other examples of strong bases yeah, take this down, right? besides hydroxide or oxide. If you have oxide in solution. Yeah, let's take on the strong acids and uh, we, it's the ones that commonly come out, right? Yeah. We got this video, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll put it on our N4 chemistry. Yeah. Right? So we got that down, then once over there we'll stop there. And then we're gonna pay attention to the board there. Okay, going back from yesterday's work, we learnt uh, there's three different theories. Okay, the Arrhenius theory, right, the Brahms and Lowry theory, and the Lewis theory. And now this I give you all examples of the reactions for each theory, and uh, it's in your textbook, okay? Then we're looking at, I'm going to explain this, but let's go over here, let's give a little more overview. And then we look at amphoteric substances. What's an amphoteric substance? It's a substance that can act as an as a base. So if we look at this equation, we're going to go over this here, but we look at an equation which is a reversible reaction. That means it can move from the left to uh, right or come back right to left. And then we can see how a substance can act as both uh, acid and base, according so to the is, definition. Yeah. Right? Then, how do we measure the strength of an acid? How do we measure the strength of, the, of an acid? We look at the concentration. Right? And concentration is given by N over V, number of moles over volume. The units for concentration is mole per decimeter cube. Decimeter, like kilo, Right, it's I think it's ten to the minus uh, three, right? So the mole to decimeter cube. So basically, it's giving us this is your units. Mole is your units for moles, and then volume put it in decimeter cube, sometimes centimeter cube, sometimes meters cube. Right? Obviously, it's always cubic, right? Because of volume. Now. We got this thing here to work on the concentration, right? In other words, to work on the strength of the acid, we need to work on something called the disassociation constant, which is this value K, right? To work on K, we take our products over our reactants. Products over reactants. Right? I wrote it here. Products over reactants. If we're looking at this equation here, and we're looking at it from our left hand side, going to our right hand side. Which side is our product? Right? Where, where's our reactants? Right? Remember what we said? How do we write this out? The concentration of our product over our reactants. So if we look at the concentration of our products, right? It's uh, our hydrogen 
this a is a variable, right? Because this is a general equation, right? So this a is regarded as a variable. So you can put in other stuff in the other elements. So we're looking at the concentration of the products, which is H3O plus and OA, right? Sorry. And then our reactants is HOA and H2O. But what, what do you see here? H2O is not H. Yeah. So in terms of the, this association constant, H2O, the concentration of water, is 1. So we don't consider the concentration of water. Anything divided by 1 is itself. So we don't consider the concentration of water or solids. We don't consider the concentration of water or solids. Right? So I'm just going to write that down. We don't consider. Yeah, I don't know if this works. Okay, then, um, yeah, let's go back to the set of it. Does everybody understand here? Yeah. Timber? Yeah. It's all the uh, school work, but it's, like I said, this video here, yeah, mm -hmm. it's got everything in it. It's a 53 minute video, but it's got this whole chapter in that video. Yeah. So, if you've got time this weekend, watch the whole video, you're going to know acid and bases. If you know acid and bases, that's another 15% you can add to your marks. And then now you passed. You got the two. Oh, no, 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 no. This I'm going to go. I'm combining uh, chem track and chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think only the, uh, it's higher, like you didn't do chem in school, though. Yeah. So it's all like new. Yeah, yeah but the problem is. I think sometimes it's actually it better to look at it with new eyes, you know? <laughs> Probably. It's like, it's like a, <laughs> accounting. The guys who do accounting in school, and when they go to university, they. No. It's not different. Good. Yeah, it's different. Oh, so yeah, I want to put one more equation in here.
can you take that? <laughs> Reaction. It's short form for reaction. RxN. Yeah, I'll, I'll load up the videos uh, over this weekend. So, and then it's my subject. Check it out. Research, uh, I think uh, Nikki and uh, we had some errors in your, your spelling of your name. And, uh, <laughs> and you changed your surname, eh? Yeah, we sent, oh, okay. it, we sent it in the department, so. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, okay. we sent it with your IDs okay. and your new ID. So uh, once we get feedback, we'll send it. Okay. You have to resign. He changed yesterday. Yeah. I don't spell. It's you have to change all your this thing. You qualified in anything. Oh. You have to change all your documentation. You know that once you change your surname, because it's not an avoidance. Yeah, you need to start. Otherwise, because when you're applying for jobs now, it's gonna be different, and they don't want to accept it. Yeah. To so restudy everything. To <laughs> restudy everything. That's why some uh, ladies. They don't change. They, got, yeah. they, they go as whatever surname, but they don't change their, their surname on their yeah. ID. Yeah, they don't, they don't they change. change it. So surname. Especially the doctors. Because of that, yeah. Doctors yeah. have that problem. Yeah. And especially if they got honors and you know all these fancy things. They don't take the husband surname. Yeah. Maybe I why the not know the consequences. Yeah. 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 Oh, you go to each institution and then you provide them with a new uh, identification. Oh, they then they, they and you uh, give them the old identification yeah. and they reissue. But you have to pay for everything. I know you, you, you can say then and all you have to pay that. Like, uh, uh, 300 bucks. You know, really? Just for the new set of It goes the effort to go and change all the degrees and certificates oh. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And even your small qualifications, even those certificates yeah. didn't work and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to go back to the training company. Yeah. It's like a big, uh, you know, all your small, uh, That's why lot of people yeah, yeah. yeah, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. You have applied to now yeah. Cheetah, yeah. and then uh, give them to uh, And they'll take years yeah. to get back to you. To answer your email. Like, you what? <laughs> no, you can help, you can speak to administration, yeah? They'll help you uh, facilitate the process. Yeah, that is a big job. It's what I mean. Uh, yeah, it's not that. Like, it's not that. It doesn't make sense anymore. But, you, know, you should be able to just. Uh, no, I mean, yeah. Provide. I mean, that. you know, it's like now in the modern time, because with studying and stuff now, all your stuff is under your name, and then you get married, you change everything. What problems? Huh? <laughs> they should. But they should just 
worry about the ID number because that never ever changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's always make things more difficult for people. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the fraudsters, oh, they can get anything easy, easy, easy. easy. You can change your name when home fails. Also, yeah. I mean, like you know, they say if you don't don't like your your birth name or whatever. You can, yeah, lots of people. Change, change, the, change his name. Yeah, yeah. 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 What age? Hey, what your parents are gonna think now? <laughs> 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 that contain hydrogen and when we have it in an aqueous solution that means when we add it H2O mm -hmm. right it will give off hydrogen ions so what is the ion here that's being formed we're looking at this acid reaction here it's your H3O right mm -hmm. and then in terms of the base reader or Arrhenius is TD in terms of bases uh, similarly, places where substances where substances which produce hydroxide ions. Right. So in an aqueous solution, right, if we add uh, potassium oxide and we have it in an aqueous solution, that means we add H two O. It's going to give off what? Hydrox hydroxyl ions. Yeah. And we get O H minus. So that's how we know that this. So we we then know. That this is an acid, this is a acid, and this is a base. Now let's go to the next one. Read Brown says loudly, Stevie. An acid is divided as being able to lose or donate the protons by the base is defined as species with ability to gain or accept the protons. Right? So an acid is defined as a proton donor. Mm -hmm. So, where's the proton located here? It's acid, this is called acetic acid, right? Mm -hmm. And we've got the H here. The H then moves to, gets donated to H3O, right? Mm -hmm. And this becomes H3O plus, right? And this is CH3COO. So, in terms of this here, it donates a hydrogen, right? And this here accepts a hydrogen. So which one is the acid and base? And then conjugate pairs? Which is the conjugate pair for this acid? So this conjugate this base, base is here. Yeah. And the conjugate acid is here. Yeah. 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 It's a base, oh, sorry. It's a base. This is actually a base reaction. 
Okay, now let's go to the next one. The Lewis E. Uh, Kaya, Kaya, you doing well? Lewis, an acid is a substance which can accept a pair of electrons. An acid is a substance that can accept a pair of electrons. Right? And the next carrier? And a base can donate a pair of electrons. And a base can donate a pair of electrons. Now let's look at this here. We've got BF3 plus NH3, which will yield BF3 NH3. Now for homework, I want you. What is the Lewis theory? And explain this equation in terms of the Lewis theory. Right? I want you to do this here. Explain. Yes. Yeah. And then you tell me which one is donating and what's happening there and why. Although it's a combination reaction. You know what's a combination reaction? When two compounds come together to form another compound, a single compound. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's let this uh, go up to this amphoteric substances. Finally, what's the amphoteric substance? The substance which is able to access both nutrient and waste. Right. So let's look at this here. We've got two hydroxyl ions plus an hydronium ion, and we end up with four H two O. And what happened to uh, what happened in this reaction? And we say that this reaction is reversible. What do we mean when the reaction is reversible? If you go from remember left to right and then back, back, yeah, right to left, right. So what's happening in this reaction? We said that. Uh, an amphoteric substance is something that can act as both an acid and base. If we look at the reaction from this way, from right hand side going to left hand side, what's happening here? It's a? Why is it a base? So well, what's uh, what's happening here? It's actually you know here it is actually what giving off giving off over here in in terms of this one here this H two O gives off a hydrogen right so it acts as in what acid and then over here we work the other way around. That's a base because it yeah. gives off the OH. Right. Well done. Right. Now it's the same true for <coughs> this reaction, right? It's the same thing. Right? And then so that's how we know in the in the examples, you must learn this here, right? Because they're gonna ask you what's an amphoteric substance and give two reactions to show that a substance is amphoteric. And then you're gonna use water and you're gonna give me these reactions here. And then over here, that's the true reaction. Yeah. And then over here, you must have the reaction balance. Right? They're going to give you the reaction and then they're going to give you an unbalanced reaction. They're going to say, explain the following reaction. First, you have, you have to remember, I, th I showed you how to balance reactions. Yeah. Left hand side, right hand side, yeah. and you write down the number of elements and then you count. Right? And then you, you start uh, with H. Mm -hmm. You always start with H and then you move on. All right? Is there anything else other than water that does that? Uh, there's a few. There's a few. Let me show you this. Let's show you this.
you can so yeah, the, I didn't use this. This is a general one, but you can use you can use more than one example, right? Many of you are probably wondering why in the world I have a frog on here. We talked about a frog as being an amphibian because it lives on land and water. Well, today we're going to talk about... Yeah, that's why ampho, right? You can do both things. Amphoteric substances, which means it's a substance which behaves as both an acid and a base. So amphoteric and amphibian have something in common. So first, water acts as an acid and a base. So what is amphoteric? Amphoteric is simply a substance that can behave as either an acid or a base. It behaves either one. So it behaves either an acid or a base. For example, water is the most common amphoteric substance. So when you think about amphoteric, you can always think about water. So when you think of the reaction of water, if you have water, you don't think about this, but water actually reacts with itself. It both donates a proton and accepts a proton. So you could say one of these waters here is an acid. So one of the other is a base. A proton, because if you look on the other side, and the other one of the donating. products is a hydronium ion, which is a water that accepted a proton. And one of those is a hydroxide ion, which is a water without a proton. It's something else that may be. Right, remember? <clears throat> proton acceptor and proton donor. In mm -hmm. this case, you have water acid both. Right? And then obviously we know that it's an acid and base. Okay, so the acid here yeah, you can see accepted a proton, became H3O plus, and the base here yeah, it donated a proton and became OH minus. And everyone understands this? Yeah. yeah. Some? Yeah. Some? Familiar to you is the idea of an ion product constant. We've actually used this formula before. Kw equals 10 to the minus 14, which is equal to the hydronium ion concentration minus the hydroxide ion concentration. So if you're wondering, where do we get this formula? It's from this reaction that we see here of the hydroxide and the proton or the hydronium reacting together. So let's look at some reactions where water acts as both an acid and base when it's no, not with water. water. So let's think about water as a base. So when we put water with an acid, such as this is nitrous acid, we see that water accepts a proton. So here we'd say water is a base. And then we'd say that would be our acid. Now a couple things I'd like you to look for as we're going through all these reactions here is one thing, the reaction, every one that we put, the reaction will be balanced for atom and for charge. For example, the charge on the reactant side of this is going to be zero. And the charge on the product side is, is zero as well, because if we take both charges for this, which we, if we look at the charge for this is plus one and minus one, we sum those together, it's zero, which is equal to the charge on the other side. Also, if we add up the, the hydrogens, there are one plus two, three hydrogens, which is equal to the number of hydrogens on the product side. There's one nitrogen, one nitrogen on the product side. We have one there. And then also we add, and there's three three oxygens, so one plus two is three oxygens. So, so this make sure, will be true for each. Make sure that your reactions must be balanced, right? The, most likely they ask you to explain. That's what commonly comes out. They give you a, a reaction like this here, and then they say explain how uh, water is amphoteric. And then you have to give the explanation, and you can write down acids, uh, HNO2, you can write down underneath, you can read out of the reaction, you can write which one underneath is the acid, which one is a base, and then uh, you must show that the reaction is balanced. You're gonna get a mark for that there, right? For the balanced reaction. Each reaction will be balanced for atom charge. The other thing you wanna watch for is a type of arrow. This is a equilibrium arrow, which means that it's not a strong acid or a strong base in this reaction. Let's look at the next one. How does water act as an acid? This means it's going to be donating a proton. Well, for water to act as an acid, it simply needs to be reacting with a base. And so here we have uh, water reacting with a nitrite ion. And so here water is going to be an acid, and the nitrite ion is going to be the base. And you see on the other side, when water's lost a proton, we have a hydroxide produced. And then we have nitrous acid. Now, since this is hydroxide. As you can see here, water is donating a proton. So when water donates a proton, remember our definition is that an acid is a proton donor. So H2O donates a proton and becomes OH minus. The NO2 accepts a proton, 
So it is a base. All right. So this is how water is acting as both the base and acid. So if you're coming back to your question, like right, we'll be using water, but we don't have to use those two equations. We can use like any equation where we can show like what is acting as the acid and base. You can use this one here, for example, or the previous one he showed when you're adding two water molecules together. All right. Is that produced in this reaction? But, it, but it's like, if you look at the past year papers, they usually give you the equation and they ask you to explain. But if you go back to the older papers, they ask you for the equations. They ask you for this two, the water acting as a base, water acting as an acid. They'll tell you what is apothetic. Show using reactions how this is possible. And that'll be like a five mark question. And then you should do the two reactions. Basic solution. And up here at the top, since we have a hydronium produced, this would be an acidic yeah, solution. Time now, right? You guys, let me, I'll add this for you. Okay, right, this is added to the group, right? All right, so if we're going back to our manual, right? Uh, we we on page uh, fifty nine. No, sorry, sixteen on the top. Right. So, and in sixty on the top, we're looking at the disassociation constant, right? Uh, for the uh, for this reaction, the first disassociation constant, if the acid contains more than acidic hydrogen atom, is given by K, and usually expression is uh, the products of the reactants, right? That's the same example that we have on the board. The concentration of water remains virtually constant, right? Whenever something is constant, we don't write it out, right? Because water is constant, the concentration of water is constant, we don't write it out. A high value of K means the particular acids is strong. Let's put there a high value of K, acid strong. That's what you need to know here. High value of K means acid is strong. Low value of K is obviously acid is weak. And they say for a series of acids containing the same number of hydroxide groups, K is found to increase in order. Right? And then they got they they showing you the example one hydroxide group, two, uh, and then they got moving on to two hydroxide groups. As we increase the hydroxide groups, the the K is found to increase. So what does it tell us? As we increase the oxide group, the acids are stronger. Write that down. As we increase the hydroxide groups, acids become stronger. As we increase the hydroxide groups, acids become stronger. As we increase the hydroxide groups, acids become stronger. And then they give us, uh, according to the theory, an acid is a substance which uh, can accept a pair of electrons, whereas a base is substance that can donate a pair of electrons. And they say, note there, that the scope of the acid-base reactions is thus consider considerably extended to embrace reactions in which protons are not involved. Because, so sometimes, if you look at the Lewis definition, we don't need a proton. We're looking at substances that are donating and accepting what? Electrons. So we don't have to always have the hydrogen there for it to be an actual acid or base. You're getting it? Yeah? Everyone with me? Okay? So then they're saying, let's look at uh, the reaction between 
boron, trichloride, and ammonia as an example. So I want you to write down below that BF3 plus NH3. On that underneath that there, just write down the reaction. BF3 plus NH3. And then write down BF3 and NH3 together. BF3 and the, the product is BF3 and NH3. Everyone got that? Yes. BF3 plus NH3 and then the product is BF3 and NH3 together. And we see that Lewis, remember what we said? In terms of the definition for Lewis, right? as Kaya said, that it is that we're looking at electron acceptors and electron donors, right? Mm -hmm. So example of boron trichloride have important parts to play in catalyzing many organic reactions. Other examples of fluid acid uh, behavior include the formation of complex ions and we've got uh, copper 2 plus which acts as an, uh, in terms of an acid and we have 4 NH3, right? And then we come together, right? It's like it acts as a base there. Right, uh, they got some uh, reactions in the bottom there in terms of your metal oxides. In terms of your activity, let's look at the questions. They say, give an explanation, sorry, give an, and explain the definition of acid, making the use of concept of electrons. So, what type of acid and base would you be talking Lewis. about? Right, well done, Lewis, right? Uh, without the use of this concept, are there any other substances covered by one of the definitions you give uh, which would not be covered by the other? Which do you consider to be the better definition and why? So basically they say if you consider the other two definitions, Arrhenius and uh, Bronze, comparing those, which one would you consider to be the best definition? Arrhenius. Arrhenius, why? <laughs> <laughs> this was number one. <laughs> no, no, no. These, these guys, right? They, this guy, like you said, he was number one. He's 1600s, right? Yeah. And then as this, this, as we moved along, this guy was the latest guy. So he took, he had, only had the information here. He took their information and he actually used it to write his theory. So the Lewis theory is the best theory. Right? Oh, so this is most informed. Most informed theory, yeah. <coughs> okay, uh, and then they ask you, then they're going back in the question two, they ask you for the Brown cell uh, uh, Lowry definition, and then they ask you for example, then they ask you about the Arrhenius and Brown cell uh, theories of acid and bases and show uh, latter theory as in, uh, more embracing, right? And then it, that's what I, I'm, I was trying to explain here. As you're moving on with the time, they, they're getting more information and they, it becomes more concise, right? Uh, then they say, write the equation in terms of Brownson, Lowry, to, uh, concept for each of the following reactions. And interaction of acetic acid and water. Right? We had the acetic acid, uh, there's, oh, there's a chair, right? All the, those ones were actually in the textbook. Uh, reaction between ammonia and HCl. Eight, so it's NH3 plus HCl. I, hydrolysis of a solution. Whenever you have hydrolysis, what does hydrolysis mean? Lysis means to break down. Hydro means water. Yeah. Addition of water to break down a compound. Write that down. Hydrolysis means the addition of water to break down a compound. Hydrolysis means addition of water to break down a compound. Right? Hydrolysis is addition of water to break down a compound. Like I said, hydro means water, lysis means break down. Right? So let's turn over here. Uh, yeah, so they say explain the why solutions of copper 2 sulfate, barium chloride, and sodium. Uh, sulfide two, respectively, an acid reaction and a neutral reaction, an alkaline reaction to indicators. So this here is looking at our indicators, right? And then you, you, uh, this here you're looking at neutralization reactions, right? Let's write them in brackets for number five: neutralization reactions.
right? The one that I want you to go over, uh, number nine and number ten. Right, those are exam questions. This is right there, nine and ten circle. Nine and ten exam questions. Actually, eight, nine, and ten. And question eleven, I got it down there. Question eleven, I, I got it down there, right? Also comes up. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I want you guys to attempt this year. They say sodium for eight. They got a uh, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Silic acid is a weak acid, and uh, pyloric acid uh, is a strong acid in aqueous solution. What explanation can you give for this behavior? If they need a theory, and you need to explain why, why it's strong, uh, why are acids strong, why are acids weak, why are acids, uh, why are bases strong, why are bases weak? You need to know the differences, right? And then number nine, he say in each pair given below, which of the acids of the two uh, would you expect to be stronger? Right? And then you're going to compare carboxylic acid and nitric acid, right? Uh, sulfuric, uh, so, sorry, sulfurous acid and sulfuric acid. Now this thing is, guys, these ones come out. So you need to know the compound how it's written out. Right, so we're gonna go over it, but try it on your own. If you don't know the compound, Google the compound. Carboxylic acid, it will give you the carboxylic acid. Nitric acid, if you don't know what nitric acid is, you need to be able to write it out. Because in exams, they're gonna give you this in words. They're not gonna give you the reaction. Hmm. Sometimes they give you the reaction, but sometimes they don't. If you if if you given uh, it in words, then if you show the compound by writing it out. You can work out how many protons, right? And which one will be a stronger and weaker acid, you know, from that day. So you're gonna get marks for that, all right? Okay. Uh, the same with number 10, right? Uh, each of the pairs, which base of the two would you expect to be stronger, right? The same thing. So guys, so what I want you guys to do, watch that video. Uh, the Khan's Academy video for uh, 53 minutes. After watching that video, you'll be able to answer 8, 9, 10, and even 11, right? And then if you have any issues, come back, we can then discuss, right? Then we can discuss. And then your self-check was, at the end of this chapter, the main thing to take away is, are you able to define an Arrhenius, the Arrhenius theory? The Brown said Lowry theory, the Lewis theory. Those are the three takeaways that we need from here, right? And then next week, we're going to go over the last chapter over here, which is descriptive chemistry, which is actually the longest chapter. Uh, yeah. Which is, yo, descriptive chemistry is quite tough, but I'm trying, what I'm going to try and do for the descriptive chemistry, I'm going to try and summarize this and make notes for each of the topics. For hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, and then be easier to learn from. All right, we'll look at the past year papers. We we'll look at the solutions, and then I'll try and get a complete for the uh, descriptive chemistry. Then, right? okay, yeah, we're done for the day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Where was coming?